So good morning. Uh, I created this talk called The Darker Side of Tech. And really what it was is a little bit of um, nerd terrorism. I'm, I'm here to scare you into believing the things that I'm believing. And let's get into this. So I heard you like operating systems. Who here doesn't like operating systems? Seriously. I mean, I, I know there's some definite operating system haters out there. Where are you unikernel people? Yeah, certified operating system haters. But what I want to talk about is um, bias in operating systems. Um, Linux is very, very popular these days. Um, it's so popular that you have companies like Microsoft building parts of their back-end stack. You know, the people who make Windows? They're building their back-end stacks using Linux. But why is Linux so popular these days? Is it because it has all the driver supports? Um, is it because it has Linus Torvalds? I don't know. Is it because um, someone told you that you were going to use it? Or is it companies like Ubuntu or organizations like Debian or companies like Red Hat? Is this why we use Linux? Why don't we use FreeBSD? Um, I'm in a small camp of people that um, on the losing side of history, of course, that thought that FreeBSD would actually be the winning operating system. Anyone here agree? Anyone thought that FreeBSD was going to win? But it didn't. And, and this is the important thing about that. It didn't win because it wasn't better. I mean, I will say to this day, FreeBSD is easier to write kernel code for than Linux. But I'm not going to get a great solar flare driver for FreeBSD as it's going to work on Linux. And that's not saying anything, because if you worked with solar flare, you'd realize that um, it, it works OK on Linux, and it works slightly less OK on FreeBSD. But that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying here is that technically, FreeBSD should have won. If you were following the news groups, Compsless Linux, back in the, in the, in the 90s, you would think that FreeBSD was actually better than this thing these people were complaining about. It comes out of where Unix came from. It actually had people who worked on Unix with a capital U-N-I-X, but it didn't win. And, you know, why is that? And I don't think it's because of just technical reasons. It's a lot of mind share, a lot of bias. Um, here's something else. Does anyone know what this logo is? Anyone? Anyone? That's right. It's Plan 9. Now, here's something back in 96. I remember this. And I, and I wish, I'm glad I'm not a betting person because I would have lost many fortunes on this. I would have said, Plan 9, this is amazing. This is the future of operating systems. Um, but by the show of hands and not knowing of Glenda, the Plan 9 bunny, um, it didn't quite win. I mean, it had everything. You can configure all of Plan 9 through the file system. You didn't need crazy other idioms of things like dbus or things like that. It just was a file system. As a matter of fact, the Acme editor, the Plan 9 editor, which you could write code in, uh, was actually just configured with all text files. It's actually an amazing piece of software. But it didn't win. And why didn't it win? It was not technical, just a little bit of bias. Wow. Here's another thing. Um, Windows. Um, any Windows lovers in the crowd? Um, I will say, hold on. <laughs> I, I will say this. I tweeted this yesterday, and people, I actually got some DMs like, Brian, are you crazy? Um, the Surface Book came out or was announced last week or week before. And I saw that, and I'm like, yes, that's, that's what I want to compute on. So I've actually been plotting for the last week of how I can move from my shiny MacBook Pro to a shiny Windows box. And now with the um, event of having Hyper-V on Windows and being able to run Docker, I actually can do that and be, and be pretty operational. But is Windows actually worse than Linux? I don't know. I'm not here to judge. So um, I wanted to be technical. This is my most technical slide on my, on my stack here. Um, T is basically for Tux, and FD is for the FreeBSD daemon. And then we have G for Glenda. 
and then we have W for Windows. Is Tux actually better? I don't know. So, um, now that I've given you something to weird out about, um, my name is Brian Lyles. Um, I go by Brian L on Twitter, um, and I, I work at a company called DigitalOcean that's actually here in New York. Uh, we are a cloud company for developers, but I'm not here to sell that today. I'm here to sell something bigger. And I'm also, but I'm really here to sell actually is this notion of I'm an urban American software developer. Anyone ever heard that term before? No, you haven't. I made it up. <laughs> so what is an urban American software developer? Well, I had this, this thought. Um, black music actually is the, is the, is the beginnings for a lot of popular music these days. Um, out of black music came rock and roll. Out of black music came country. Out of black music came hip hop. And I'm a huge hip hop fan. So what a lot of radio stations do is they say that we're urban radio stations. We play black music. I'm a black dude. I write software. I live in America. Urban American software developer. Easy enough. So. Um, I don't think this would be a velocity talk if I didn't talk about Docker. So <laughs> containers, 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 containers. I think my talk is complete. <laughs> but um, so about Docker, and we're still talking about bias, by the way. Um, Docker's winning, right? I would say they, have a, they had a 2,000-person conference. They're having another conference in Barcelona next month. Um, everybody is talking about how we run Docker, HP, Cisco, Microsoft, Docker, 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 Docker. But why is Docker winning? Um, any, everyone, I'm sure there's quite a few people here who know about systemd and spawn. And what we've, I've heard this all the time. Why would I run Docker? Systemd and spawn does almost everything Docker does. Yeah, that's, that's true. But, you know, our biases and our mind shares and all this are all in Docker's camp right now. So you can actually use systemd and spawn, or you can use LXC, or you can invent your own thing. Please don't invent your own thing. <laughs> but it does not matter. And really, what I wanted to do was spend 10 minutes um, just vamping, getting you comfortable for um, what I really wanted to talk about today. And I'm putting this up here about cognitive bias just as a frame of reference. I cribbed it off of Wikipedia, actually even better. I went onto Google, search for cognitive bias, and Google has that little blurb, and I think it said it came from Wikipedia. So that's what, this is what I'm talking about today. What is cognitive bias? I hope you read quickly. Um, the most important things here are cognitive bias, and the most really important thing here is just bias. <sighs> you ready? Yeah. We're going on a ride. So, what does a software developer look like? Well, I'll give you an example. That handsome guy right there is me. Um, I've been writing software for, not for fun, but as a professional for 20 years now. I've been doing it at, for fun for even longer. Um, but let me show you some other people, and let's decide. Are they software developers? Or are they not software developers? Let's play a game. Yeah. Is this guy a software developer? Yeah. All right, he might be. All right, that was an easy one. Sorry. <laughs> you don't know this guy. Actually, some of you might know this guy. <laughs> yes, some of you know this guy. He might be a software developer. He might not be. You don't know this guy. He's got a nice tie. Nice jacket, might be a software developer, he might not be. But you would never look at him and say, hey, he's a software developer. This guy, actually, we'll talk about this guy. Maybe a software developer, maybe not. But let's go back to that guy in the jacket. Um, the people in this picture, I just like this picture because it's a very neat, creative picture. The guy on the left, his name is Wes Felton. He's actually an artist from DC, um, rapper, singer. The guy in the middle is um, a very famous producer who goes by the name of Ninth Wonder. And the guy on the right is a guy named Raheem Devon. You may have heard of him if you listen to R&B music. He has sold a few million albums. Um, together, these guys, they have a group called Crossroads. So not a software developer. You were right on that one. 
Um, this guy right here is Earl Carlson. He's actually a coworker of mine at DigitalOcean. He's in our creative department. He writes a little bit of software. But if you look at him, software developer. This is actually a great friend of mine. His name is Malcolm Preston. He, is, he was a Marylander. Now he's kind of a New Yorker. Um, he doesn't write software, but he does ops. And actually, I would put him on any ops team in the entire world because guess what? He's really that good. Uh, and this was the give me. This is Kelsey Hightower. Uh, he's spoken here. He talks about, what did he talk about all the time? What's that thing? Um, Kubernetes. You may have seen his talk. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, just go to any conference and look for Kelsey Hightower, and he will give you the greatest talk on Kubernetes you've ever seen. So I want to talk about something people ask me all the time. Why aren't there more black people in tech? I'm going to tell you, and this is going to blow your mind, and I hope not to offend anybody, but I'm going to give you the reasons why there aren't many black people in tech. So. We look around, and the crowd is, is kind of diverse, but not really, not really at all. I'm giving you guys the benefit of the doubt. Um, you, so you're talking to your coworker, and you're saying, hey, you know, your code is kind of horrible, and then your coworker doesn't agree, and they're just like, no, you're kind of horrible, and then it goes even further, and it goes even further, and it devolves down into this hot mess in a PR where people are just not agreeing about the color red. Who cares? That's fine when you look alike. But let's have that conversation with me and another white male. And if I always see that you are going to be down on me or very critical of what I do, society, not me, society has told me that there is a discrepancy in the way that minorities are treated. And I'm not gonna look at you as just being a jerk coworker. I'm going to look at you as, wait a second, you don't like me because of my color, because really, technically, we're about the same. So if you don't want to be called a racist, and I hate to say I don't want to call anyone a racist unless you are, think about it from the person who's in the minority position. They don't have the context to know that we don't talk about race. They talk about race all the time. We are defined by our race. So the secret here and I don't want to offend anybody. If you don't like bad words, cover your ears, about five seconds. Um, the, the real win here is if you don't want to be called a racist at work, don't be an asshole. Treat everyone like you love them. And I put this in here about the pipeline. People are always talking about, how's the pipeline? We need more people in the pipeline. We need more people in the pipeline. You know something? That's not true. The, the reason there isn't, the pipeline is way up here on all the problems. Actually, though, the problems are occurring right here. Do you know that blacks actually get worse schooling? I'm not going to show you numbers because that's not important. I don't need to prove that point. That's not an anecdote. That's the truth. Do you know that um, because of things that happened after World War II and the GI Bill, and actually, um, blacks were actually stopped from creating institutional wealth? That's why they live in these poor neighborhoods, because guess what? They could not live anywhere else. They wanted to live everywhere, other places. So it's not a pipeline problem. It's a society problem, and we need to get back to fixing society, or at least making society better, rather than fixing our pipelines. So we've said there's no simple answers, but there are simple things you can do right now. And I'm going to give you those as... You know, I'm almost to my 20 minutes, but I'm going to give you a couple of things that will make things just a little bit better. So diversity. Um, if your company is creating a diversity plan and you've actually went and counted people, one, two, three, four, you're already, you've already lost. You can't do that. Because guess what? Um, my name is Brian Lyles. I work for a tech company, and it's mostly white. I don't need numbers to tell me that. I can just look around and say, hey, where are the black people? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so this is, actually, this is actually funny. This joke works on so many levels. I love this joke. So it's diversity, or actually what the article is about is, that's, H, that's the hexadecimal color for white, and it's white diversity. Um, diversity is way more than making it easier for women to get into your companies. I'm going to just share something with you, and this is something, something kind of crazy. Um, we have efforts for women. Um, we have efforts for 
kind of minorities, but realize this, as a black male, I'm actually excluded. There are not many black guys code, um, black guys in tech. We're always concerned about others. And guess what? I represent a group, or I'm a part of a group. I don't really represent it in any way. But I'm a part of a group that is forgotten about constantly. But, you know, we are, we're killed at higher numbers, we're jailed at higher numbers, and I still have the problem when I walk down certain streets where people cross the street just to avoid me and realizing, I want nothing to do with you. I'm definitely not going to rob you. So, you might be a racist. You might not. But understand that um, racism is a weird topic. It's a very touchy topic, and I don't want to go through it with everyone here. But consider this. And this is, this is very simple. Um, and I'm not speaking in generalities because I hate this, but I will say that for black people that I can touch, we talk about our experiences. I can walk down the street here in New York, see a black dude, nod at him, he'll nod at me back, and you know what we'll say to each other? Silently, hey, I understand your struggle. So whenever we're calling people racist, um, I find that the majority wants to identify that as themselves. You don't have to personally identify as a racist, but the system can be racist. So whenever we're saying you're a racist, we're not talking about you. So you, don't have to, you have to be able to pull yourself out of the I and say the we and see what we're doing. So how do we win? All right, here's the money slide. You guys ready for this? This is the money slide. Winning is when you have a black woman building tech at your shop, at your products. But let me explain this, because I got some pushback from this, and I know my time's going to run out, but we're a little early, so I can go a little bit longer. Um, so here's the problem. I actually pulled a demographic of a person who I do not see represented. When we can actually figure out where that single demographic, in this case, a black woman, can actually go into a tech company or actually feel that they actually have the ability or even feel that they actually can understand how they can have the ability to go work at a tech company and not be in marketing, not be in legal, not be in HR, but be an engineer and make the products, and that's not a weird thing, society is winning. And that's only one way to win. And I'm not telling you all the answers, but that's an easy measure because we can all do that right now. So... Um, thank you for this 20 minutes. Uh, hopefully I offended. Hopefully I made you thought, think a little bit. Uh, the conversation is definitely open, and it's not just me. There's lots of other people doing lots of other work. Uh, for those of you who look like me doing this, um, keep hope alive. I'm always there for you. For all my coworkers and my future coworkers, hey, we're all in this together. It's not, you know, I am not Brian the black developer when I'm making money at your job. I am Brian the team member. But guess what? When I leave that office, black power, and thank you.